What's going on? I'm Stephen Lewis. Welcome into this little thing I like to call life as we know it. Uh, where are we? Almost the end of May. A few days removed from Memorial Day weekend. All right. That's the unofficial official start to summer, right? Uh, like me, follow me, ping me, whatever. At on the socials at Stephen Lewis on air. That's pretty much Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Pinterest, LinkedIn, whatever. Uh, let's be friends. So. Yeah, I kind of did a quick thing about Fast X or Fast 10. I didn't get too much into it because, in my humble opinion, the Fast and Furious movies have gotten pretty outlandish over the years. I want to talk about movies. Uh, Fast and Furious won the box office this weekend. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 had a pretty strong showing nonetheless, and they filmed or they reviewed Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny at Cannes Film Festival. And not very good reviews coming out of it, which... I kind of expected that just because Harrison Ford is 80, and the big complaint so far was that it just doesn't live up to the feel. They tried to recapture the feel of the original, but you're going to have a hard time doing that. Harrison Ford at 80 can't quite be Indiana Jones anymore, so we'll see. I'm still excited to see it, but enough about the fabled archaeologist for a minute. Let's talk fast and furious. Now... Back in 2001, when The Fast and the Furious came out, it made everybody want to put NOS in their cars and race on the streets. At least some people did, anyway. And if you weren't going to be a street racer, you kind of wanted a car that looked like you were a street racer. So these movies went from street racing to uh, global heists and whatnot to now they're borderline secret agents with damn near superpowers, it would seem, in some cases. Some of the stunts have definitely... Got a little outlandish. If a car is moving in one direction and you're on top of said car going 80 plus miles an hour and another car is coming the opposite direction going equally fast to catch up with you, you cannot really jump from one car to the other and let the windshield catch you. Doesn't work like that. Your body would go through the windshield and you'd, well, pretty much be dead. But nonetheless, they've also gotten into things like, I don't know, sending a Pontiac Fiero into space with a big rocket strapped to it. I don't think that would work either. But nonetheless, Mashable decided that they were going to rank all the Fast and Furious movies from 1 through 10 so far. Now, I won't do any spoilers for the 10th movie in case you haven't seen it yet. They're the one spoiler that everybody knows about is despite the fact that he said he's back to when The Rock Johnson is back at the very end of the movie in the post credit scene. Now, Fast X won the box office with $67.5 million. Worldwide, almost $320 million. It is the lowest movie opening in the franchise since 2006, if that says anything about it. But let's see where they rank these things, shall we? Fast and Furious, which came out in 2009, ended up at number 10. The Fate of the Furious in 2017, which I believe was the first movie without Paul Walker in it, at number nine. That was the one that kind of introduced Shuri's Theron, I believe, which, you know, wasn't horrible. Too Fast, Too Furious, the one without Vin Diesel, uh, out in 2003 at number eight. Fast and Furious 6 in 2013. That one didn't bother me. That was the second one with The Rock in it, and I kind of enjoyed it quite a bit, actually. Here's the one that I don't understand. The infamous Fiero ride into space in F9 comes in at number six in 2021. And I thought that movie was pure garbage. But nonetheless, splitting the difference at number five, Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, which people hated in 2006 when it came out. It introduced us to Han, who everybody seems to like. But overall, not too many people dug Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, but I feel like the movies that came after it made it better in some capacity. I don't know. Uh, The newly released Fast X at number four. Uh, Probably close to where I put it. I think Fast X is better than the last couple, but certainly not what I would call a good movie. Furious 7, which was the one that they had to use CGI and his brothers to finish the show that Paul Walker started because he passed during the filming of that in 2015. Uh, I liked it, if for no other reason the Wiz Khalifa song that came at the end of it, but I thought it was a nice ending to the whole Paul Walker part of this. And I think the movies have suffered ever since then because they have a hard time. They're sticking by their guns with not recasting Paul Walker and not using CGI or his brothers, but the rumor is they're going to do that for the last installment. But if you saw the last Fast X movie, it really doesn't make sense 
to not have Paul Walker in this one. It's hard to keep him out of it. I know they've done their best to try, and bringing back Jordana Brewster as Mia makes that even harder because you never see her husband. You just They talk about him in passing, and it's they're in a tough spot with it, and I guess you have to forgive that a little bit, but it's definitely causing some plot issues for sure. Uh, Number two, Fast Five in 2011. That was the one where Dwayne The Rock Johnson uh, debuted in it and was, you know, pretty solid for the most part. I think everybody liked Fast Five. That was a, you know, good outing and a lot of fun. And that kind of got them on the road to where they were doing capers and heists and whatnot. And it was good stuff. And at number one, Hard to knock the original Fast and Furious in 2001, which for those who don't know, watch the movie Point Break from the early 90s with Keanu Reeves and Patrick Swayze. And Fast and Furious is essentially Point Break, but with race cars instead of surfing. So uh, they wanted to get to 10 to honor Paul Walker's memory. They are there. The next one should be the last one. And it feels like this franchise is definitely limping across the finish line but nonetheless it is still raking in money and for as long as it does well that's what's going to continue to happen until you know somebody decides otherwise i guess for the love of god whatever you do don't make a 12 or 13 you need to end this while you still can if you haven't checked it out yet again it's a popcorn movie i'm not going to blast it all together but i do think they have gotten a little bit too outlandish. I mean, in this latest one, you would think that Vin Diesel is damn near Superman with the feats of strength that he is able to produce over the capacity of the film. But hey, whatever puts money in your bank account if you're universal, right? Anyway, that is what I got on this Monday night. Enjoy yours wherever it takes you, whatever you're doing. Uh, Do it with people you like, love, or tolerate because time is limited. So stop listening to me and get out of here.